Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here. A little while back, I tried doing some micro-machining in graphite, which went remarkably well. But while those tiny tests were all well and good, I wanted to do something a little bigger from a volumetric perspective. I wanted to let the Nomad loose with a full-size 8th inch end mill and really blow through a good amount of material. So I decided to try and make a casting mold in graphite. Graphite is commonly used as a mold material in casting glass and some non-ferrous metals because it can take the temperature and nothing really sticks to it. Given that I've been doing a lot of machining in sterling silver and had accumulated some silver scraps and dust, I wanted to try casting these remains into an ingot. So in Fusion 360, I started designing a mold. I first started by creating a block of stock and a cavity. That cavity was extruded with a small taper angle. This was more for tool clearance than anything else, but it does help prevent the ingot from getting stuck inside the cavity. To create a decorative border around the front edge of the ingot, I did a swept cut around the bottom of the pocket. I also created a feature that would leave the Carbide 3D logo embossed on the face of the ingot. For tool pathing, I'm going to start with a 3D pocket for roughing. Normally I would go for an adaptive toolpath, but graphite is so easy to machine that I really don't need to worry about keeping my cutter engagement constant. Next up is a 2D pocket toolpath to finish the flat faces. And then to wrap things up, I'll just use whatever combination of 3D toolpaths I deem necessary to finish the non-vertical or horizontal areas. I went with a scallop toolpath and a 1 16th inch ball end mill for the majority of the non-horizontal surfaces, with a 1 32nd inch ball end mill sharpening up the features in the Carbide 3D logo. Four toolpaths is all I put into this. But before we begin machining, let's talk about safety procedures. Graphite is a cousin of coal, and you don't want to breathe in either of these things. Furthermore, graphite is conductive. You don't want airborne particles migrating somewhere they don't belong, like on your controller board. Because of that, dust collection is essential. I used a HEPA rated vacuum with the hose clamped near my workpiece to capture anything that might have an inclination to float away. It wouldn't even be a bad idea to improvise paper way covers to prevent graphite from falling underneath the machine. Whatever you do, don't use air blast. Okay, so with that warning out of the way, here is the actual machining. Starting with the 8th inch end mill, I'm running at 10,000 RPM, a 60 inch per minute feed rate, a 0.08 inch depth of cut, and a step over of up to 75%. Because I was uncertain of how graphite would shear or if it would chip out with such aggressive parameters, I left my radial stock to leave pretty high at 0.02 inches. These parameters ended up working just fine. Next up was a scallop finishing toolpath with a 16th inch ball end mill. 10,000 RPM, 70 inches per minute with a 2 thou step over. Now keep in mind, our cutter engagement is not 100% here. We should hopefully be running into graphite with at most a third of our cutter. And our step over is really small for resolution purposes. This is a finishing toolpath, not a roughing toolpath. So don't try translating this directly to a pocketing toolpath. And lastly, the 1 32nd inch flat end mill, 10,000 RPM, 40 inches per minute, 5 thou step down. I'm using this toolpath in place of a pencil toolpath because I understand its parameters a little better. It's just here to define the features with a little more resolution. Alright, that's one mold down. I'm going to make one more scaled up slightly just in case we have a little more silver than I expect. Like with sawdust, the big clumps of graphite that you see aren't really a problem here since they settle quickly, but you still don't want them working their way into any of the components like the tool probe or the stepper motor under the frame. So as soon as you're done machining, vacuum your enclosure thoroughly. Now that we have a pair of molds, I'm going to go outside and start heating up a clay melting dish with propane and slowly add in larger pieces of silver. By the way, off camera, I seasoned this dish with borax to prevent any silver from sticking to the walls. There are plenty of instructions for how to do this online, I'll link to a couple in the description below. Full disclaimer, this is my first time deliberately melting metal, so I'm sure my technique and setup could be improved with a bit more time and practice. Also, in case you're wondering, I'm only starting with a weed burner here because we have this 20 pound tank of propane at work that I'm trying to use up, and the propane that you get here is so much cheaper per pound than the roughly one pound tanks you can get at the home center. I will eventually switch to map gas at the very end when those last couple extra degrees of flame temperature matters, but propane is the cheapest way to give my setup a healthy thermal head start. As the silver melts and goes all terminator liquid metal on you, you'll see impurities filming up on the surface. If I had a graphite rod or something, I would skim them off, but I don't, so it is what it is. Yeah. 
In a toaster oven, I was preheating my graphite mold to just try and reduce any thermal shock, but to really achieve any practical improvements in the surface finish of your casting, you really need to bring up that temperature with a torch. I had some issues getting my silver to flow into all the tiny little features, and that's entirely on me for not knowing when, where, and how much heat I should be applying to both the melting dish and the mold. Over time, graphite will start to develop pitting, and small pieces might flake off. This mold will not last forever, and that's okay. As a proof of concept, I think this experiment was still a resounding success. I managed to machine graphite with ease on a desktop CNC, the surface finish of the resulting mold was excellent, and we got molten metal to more or less take the shape of the cavity. If you would like to make a mold like this though, I would again like to remind you that you need to be extremely diligent about CNC hygiene. Graphite dust is no joke. It'll damage your lungs, it'll short out your circuit boards, heck, it'll even explode if you have too much of it floating in the air. Don't do this without a solid plan to control airborne particulates. Good luck, have fun, and stay safe machining, folks.